Surviving underwater takes a whole new set of skills. Some creatures use chemical weapons, with colourful advertising telling attackers to back off. Some choose to live with the enemy and have a clever technique to stay alive where others would die. Others can fire off stinging cells to paralyse their prey. They can kill humans in seconds. To protect yourself against predators in the sea, you need to be highly specialised or extremely intelligent or a weird and wonderful mix of both. The great oceans of the world contain canyons deeper than 10 kilometres and mountains just as high. Temperatures range from below zero to over 30 degrees centigrade. Many areas of the oceans have not yet been explored and creatures are still waiting to be discovered. Nobody knows for sure exactly what is out there looking for its next meal. Underwater, life is lived in three dimensions. Attackers can come from any direction, up and down, from behind, in front, or from either side. Often, predators can strike with no warning. They can travel at high speeds or stay well hidden for an ambush. To survive underwater, you need to have the best self-defense. The most colorful creature on the planet has a complex and clever way of avoiding predators. It lives in every ocean but is at its most spectacular in the rainbow world of the coral reef. It comes in almost every colour you can imagine. The Nudibronch. It is small, soft and slow-moving. It could be the perfect meal for some, but it very rarely gets eaten. The nudibronch defends itself with a clever combination of chemicals, tentacles and stings. This kaleidoscopic little animal is basically a sea snail without a shell. The best way to see how these animals defend is to look at what they attack. The nudibronch is using smell and taste to hunt for food. The little horns on its head are called rhinophores, and they're picking up chemical signals to tell if there's food close by. A tube anemone. Anemones are covered in stings, so a nudibronch has to approach carefully. The nudibronch eats by enveloping its prey in its mouth. For most of these creatures, a weird and wonderful thing happens next. As the nudibronch digests the anemone, it will not be poisoned by the stings. Instead, the anemone stinging cells will harmlessly move through the body of the nudibronch to the surface of its skin. The nudibronch is now defended by the stinging cells of the anemone. Anything that tries to eat them will be stung and poisoned. Their wonderful bright colors are a warning to predators to stay away. The nudibronch uses the defenses of the anemone to continue its survival underwater. This cuttlefish is looking for a juicy meal. If attacked, a second nudibronch defense mechanism kicks in. This nudibronch has detachable body parts. The wriggly fronds on its back, known as serrata, 
will break off and continue wriggling to distract attackers. Some animals can still eat these crafty creatures, including other members of their own species. But they have one more trick to continue their survival. They can make double the amount of offspring. These two nudibrochs are mating. Which is the male and which is the female? The answer is, they both are both. These lovebirds are hermaphroditic. They have male and female sex organs. Each will fertilize the other and they will both lay eggs. And that doubles the nudibranch chances of continued survival. One of the smartest ways to defend yourself against predators is to find a way of living with the enemy. The animal who does this best swims in the Indian Ocean, the Red Sea and the Western Pacific. It has adapted a means of survival that would kill most other fish. And by doing this, it can get on with its life and let others do the defending. The clownfish. Clownfish are famous for making their homes among the deadly tentacles of sea anemones. This is a dangerous activity. Anemones eat fish by trapping them in their tentacles and releasing hundreds of tiny toxic stings. But this clownfish is determined to make its home here. As it dances, it gently brushes the anemone. It is getting stung. Amazingly, the clownfish is not succumbing to the toxin. Its body is covered in a protective layer of mucus. By doing this dance, the clownfish is gradually getting used to the toxin released by the anemone. It is a special skill to secure a safe home. Soon, it can move in full time. This little fish keeps its house clean by nibbling parasites and food scraps from the surface of the anemone. It also keeps it nicely aired by fanning oxygen around with its fins. So the anemone gets a good deal from its new guest. Both creatures continue to survive by helping each other. This feisty little fish will defend its home. This clownfish is also looking for somewhere to live. No hope here. Clownfish will aggressively defend their territory. Established females will allow a group of smaller males to join her in her home. The largest male will become her partner and fertilize her eggs. But there are lots of big predators out there. Sharks, eels and larger fish that will try to eat our clownfish. If the matriarch does not return to the anemone, all is not lost for the clownfish family. Something totally odd is about to happen. The big male will turn into a female. And the largest remaining male will become her partner and they will carry on the family line. The original mother fish may have been lost, but she has built a family that has a clever way of carrying on without her. Another strong underwater survivor is a carnivore. It moves silently and slowly, but it is an efficient hunter. And some produce a toxin that is among the deadliest on the planet.
They conquered the seas long before sharks, before dinosaurs, and they survive in every ocean in the world. Jellyfish. This incredible animal has existed for over 500 million years. This box jelly is out to kill. It's not drifting passively on the currents, but using small jets to drive itself forward. It's moving at approximately four knots. Its tentacles are sophisticated stealth weapons. They are almost invisible, but can be three meters long. It has around 60 of them, and each one is covered in 5,000 stinging cells. Like all jellyfish, this is what it uses to catch its prey. Despite the fragile appearance of the tentacles, there is no struggle and no escape. Box jellyfish have powerful venom, so the fish is killed instantly. Therefore, delicate tentacles are saved from damage. Box jellyfish can be deadly to humans. A sting instantly causes agonizing shock. The victim may die from heart failure or drowning before he can reach safety. It's no surprise, not many animals eat jellyfish. But two giants of the sea have become jelly-eating specialists, the sunfish. This enormous fish can weigh two tons, so it needs to eat a huge amount of jellyfish. Jellyfish tentacles can look threatening. But some fish skin is too thick for the stings to penetrate. It is able to feast on jellies with no problem at all. One of the largest turtles in the world, the green turtle. When she's fully grown, she'll be a herbivore. But as a juvenile, she's happy to nibble on a jellyfish. This looks like a sea of danger, thousands of golden jellyfish. But these creatures couldn't be more different from the box jellyfish. They are completely harmless. They have lost their sting. How does this fragile looking creature survive without stingers? The answer is, they don't have anything to fight against. This lagoon has become cut off from the sea. Golden jellies have almost no predators, so they do not need to defend themselves. But what about catching prey? They don't need to do that either. These jellyfish can make their own food. They have a kind of algae living inside their bodies, which converts sunlight to energy for the jellies. All the golden jellies have to do to get a meal is relax in the sunshine. And that's exactly what they do. They follow the sunlight around the lake as the day unfolds. The golden jellyfish has the most laid back life on Earth. One creature of the ocean appears in horror stories and terrifying dramas of the sea. But they live a life so fast and hard, most never make it to adulthood. They are jet propelled and only mate once or twice before they die. They are known to attack fishing vessels and sometimes even swimmers. The squid. These bizarre looking creatures are really giant mollusks who emerged about 500 million years ago. Like nearly all squid, this one has eight arms and two tentacles. Those long tentacles can shoot out,
catch a fish and then feed it into its mouth. And it survives because of its speed. It squirts out water at high speed through a tube by its head. Some squid can reach speeds of 24 kilometers per hour. It chews the food with a sharp beak, which lies in the center of its ring of arms. The Caribbean reef squid enjoys a spot of sunbathing. Its eyes are large, but its cousin, the giant squids, are the biggest in the animal world. But like all squid, it has a soft body and no shell. It is constantly trying to avoid being eaten. Its best defense is camouflage. It can change color instantly to match its surroundings. These squid are scared. There's nowhere to hide. They create a smoke screen to confuse the predators and escape under cover. But most squid rarely make it to adulthood. So they've come up with a clever way of making sure they survive. Huge numbers. This is a squid nursery. These mums have each laid their eggs and attach them to the rocks. Each mum is expecting 70,000 babies. Most will be eaten before they grow up. But by sheer force of numbers, they make sure one or two of their young will survive. One of the weirdest animals under the sea is also quite clever. It can solve problems and use tools. It has two eyes and a beak and three hearts, but no skeleton. And it has four pairs of arms. The octopus. The octopus is a cunning predator and a master of disguise. And all of them are venomous. This Australian octopus is beautiful, but deadly. It's actually a shy creature and spends most of its time hiding in holes and crevices. But if alarmed, it will glow bright yellow with luminous blue rings. A threatened animal will naturally run for home. But the veined octopus doesn't need to run anywhere. It carries its home around with it. It will use almost any protective covering as a shelter, a clam shell, a coconut shell, or even an old discarded spoon. Octopuses can be skilled hunters. A flounder can look tasty to an octopus. But if the fish has seen the octopus coming, it will use its camouflage to hide. Camouflage is also the octopus's best defense. When an octopus sees a predator, it can instantly blend into the background. It can even change the texture of its skin to look like the rocks and seaweed. But the octopus has many more means of defense in its bag of tricks. When being hunted, an octopus can defend itself by squeezing into a tiny crack in the rocks. Those amazing arms can protect our graceful friend by sacrificing themselves. If one of these octopuses is under attack, an arm will break off and keep wriggling. The predator will be distracted and the octopus can escape. For its grand finale,
the octopus will perform one last feat. If a predator tries to eat this octopus, it squirts a cloud of black ink, confusing the predator. The octopus survives. Another daring escape by the incredible octopus. Protecting yourself underwater is a game of invention. Aquatic animals have to create clever ideas to stay alive. They have an amazing toolbox to dip into. Color, camouflage, and toxins. The result is an array of strange creatures. Nudibronx, clownfish, squid, octopus, and jellyfish are just some of the best defenders in the underwater world.